Hi, in this video I will show you how to create this Involute Spur Gear using a properly generated Involute profile of the tooth. This curve here is defined using a uh, Involute equation. So let's dive into it and see how uh, this can be done such that it is pretty robust and parametric. So th the reason why you would want to do this is obviously today you could have a need to uh, generate your own tooth be it using a, a, a laser cutter or a water jet cutter, any, any sort of cutting or any sort of additive manufacturing technique requiring you to have a non-standard tooth profile or just to manufacture a, um, a tooth profile which wouldn't performance matters. Anyhow, let's dive into it and see how this is done. Well, first and foremost, we need to familiarize ourselves with the gear kinematics. We will use a pressure uh, angle here, which is typically 20 degrees and we would need to create circles or these uh, diameters in order to generate the involute. Also, we will need to handle the um, root of the teeth somehow. Now, I will just do this easily, uh, but the, just note that depending on the um, uh, rest of the geometry, this might need special attention, especially when, when it comes to performance. We will not be looking into offsetting the two profile to uh, generate uh, so, some sort of backlash but we will take into consideration a, a, a sort of clearance here in order to be able to utilize uh, oils and to be able to lubricate this ad adequately most of the tutorials i find online generate the involute by approximating the geometry using either an arc or a spline which fits a set of Points. Now these points um, can be generated by a sort of imaginary rope which you uh, tie on one end on this base circle and then you tighten it and you unwind it and which uh, will generate this involute here. And if you do that for a couple of, um, like if you generate the, this using a couple of straight lines, uh, you might fit a spline to this. So what's the problem, I hear you ask? Why not just use splines then and get it over with? Well, the problem with using splines is that it is not going to be parametric. At some point, those weights of the splines, if you change the number of tooth or the module, these weights will just be stuck in a state where you had maybe few tooth, and if you change it to lots of tooth, the spline will be completely destroyed and you will ju just generate garbage. It is not robust uh, to have parametric. You would need at some point, even for small, relatively small changes, you would need to do some additional work to, to, to fix that spline. And this is what we want to avoid. But since SOLIDWORKS has a equation driven parametric equation, we, we could do this using um, we're using vector algebra. We need to derive the equation. And of course, many sources uh, cite this equation directly, but it, it, it's not really complicated. It, essentially, it's, uh, it's this thing here, and uh, it could be really easily explained. There is two vectors essentially here, which are added on top of each other. We, we have a, a initial vector, and in my case here, I have generated this so that it, the, the angle alpha here is uh, going to go from a uh, from this black line and it's going to be positively in the um, uh, clockwise direction so what we have here is nothing but the uh, th this point here so it's a uh, vector from the, the the center point to the very top here and you can verify this for yourself if this is correct uh, you can insert um, alpha being zero and then alpha being 90 degrees and uh, verify this for yourself. So let's do that. Uh, just a, qu a quick calculation here. So sinus zero degrees is, is of course zero. So in the x direction, like this is the being the positive x direction, this is being the positive uh, y direction, we have zero here. And then cosine of zero is of course one. So have, we have the direction zero and one here. So this, this thing is pointing straight upwards in the positive y direction. And this is multiplying the radius, which is the base radius here. So we have that vector. And then we have a different, slightly different direction here. This is in fact 90 degrees rotated counterclockwise to this. So this vector here is pointing 
towards the left. And it is multiplied using this. Now, what is that? Well, if you think about it, this here is the angle in radians multiplying the radius. So what we are seeing here is actually the length of the arc. So the length of the arc is going to multiply a direction which goes to, to, to the left. Now, if we add these directions up, we will have this thing going up and then this thing going to the left and that multiplies with the direction. So what we will see essentially is if we go a little bit forward here, we will get this. And then if we go further forward, we will get that. Now this length here will grow. It will, it grows with the angle so, such that it becomes the actual arc length. And it, this is essentially the same as unwinding it. So we see here, we go further and further and you can do this and you can convince yourself that this is in fact correct. The sum of these two vectors is just going from the center to this, which is this, this, this guy right here. And then we go 90 degrees to that uh, using the distance of the arc, which is g getting us to this location. And this is of course swept over from zero to 90 degrees or we can't really use degrees here. We have to use radians. So from zero to pi over two radians, which will get us to the very end here. So you can do that. You can convince yourself that this is in fact true. All right. So what we are going to do essentially is we are going to create this um, uh, involute here. We are going to draw a line from the center point to the um, addendum. And we're going to extract that, that um, patch by the amount of the thickness of the gear. And then we're going to mirror that feature around the face that we have just created. To that, we will add the root of the tooth. And uh, the, at the end, we will add fillets. And then we will pattern the whole thing circularly uh, using the number of tooth. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS uh, and get to it. Now, the first thing we need to do is create some equations. So I need n and n is going to be, I'm, I'm just going to go with 15 for now. Then we need the module and I'm just going to call this M. And for now I'm going to set it to one. Then I need the pressure uh, angle and this I'm going to set to 20. And for units, I could use degrees here. Next is the next, we can use the uh, pitch diameter. I'm just going to call it pitch dia. And this is going to be equal to M, the module, times N, the number of teeth. Uh, next, we have the base diameter. And the base diameter is, of course, going to be the uh, pitch diameter times the cosine of the pressure angle. Yeah, now SolidWorks, of course, wants to call this degree. Never, never mind that. Okay, so that's the base diameter. Next, we go for outer diameter, which is the addendum. I'm just going to call this the outer diameter here. So we have the pitch diameter plus two times the uh, module. Then we have the root uh, diameter, which is the innermost diameter. And that is the pitch diameter minus uh, 2.5 uh, times the module. Now you can see different ways of dealing with this. This could be also conditional. It could be that this is used if the uh, module is below a certain threshold and this is less than 2.5. We will just use 2.5 here. Uh, next, we have the clearance diameter. And that is going to clearance. We need the uh, base radius. We can use the thickness root fillet. It will go with 0 0.3 times the module here. Okay. So now that this is done, we can move in and create uh, the circles that we will need. So I will start by creating the uh, addendum here. So this is going to be the outer uh, diameter.
and in here we are going to use this as well as the uh, base diameter all right now uh, on top of this we create the uh, equation driven curve we change to parametric So t is going to vary from 0 to pi over 2. And now we can see it here. So it will start on the base uh, radius and it will move uh, upwards here. Okay. Now I will add... Um, a line from the center to the outermost diameter here and I will set that in fact I will draw one here as well uh, I will dimension these uh, these will be uh, 360 degrees divided by n uh, divided by 2 that would be one tooth and then divided by 2 again that would be half of one tooth which is divided by 4 then essentially right so this here will give me uh, the, the internal thing here will give me my tooth so I need the um, um, I need this the, the root uh, as well so there we go. Now I can go out of this. Uh, I can go into extrude. I can choose this sketch and I can select my contours. So I can go ahead and choose these two regions here. Uh, this will be extruded by the amount thick. Okay, so I have that right. Now I can do can choose this one again and just go ahead and extrude uh, the root um, circle here uh, same amount everything will be parameterized like so all right now the good thing now is that I can mirror uh, these faces or this um, whole thing uh, around this face here so I can do mirror I can select the mirror face and I can select the features to mirror to be this guy right there partial and okay and there we go now we have that now on top of this I can now add my fillets so I can do uh, let's see there we go fillet and I can just add these edges here so these two edges uh, the amount is going to be uh, root fill as radius like so and finally I can do a circular pattern the direction will be this the amount will be n and features now I always had problems to dealing with features for whatever reason um, independent of what I choose here so um, I always had better luck just selecting the faces now the number of faces won't really change uh, too much um, shouldn't change too much and break everything but uh, for some uh, weird topology um, you, could, you could get weird results anyhow that is the steps needed and now this is in fact uh, parameterized so we could change uh, the number of tooth here and everything should uh, follow nicely like so And we might get some weird results if we pr push our luck. 
and select some weird uh, dimensions but as you can see obviously I am in fact there we go so for some um, yeah for, for some numbers you could uh, mess things up depending on um, if these uh, surfaces are no longer there for some weird combinations and in that case you might need some um, manual intervention but for most cases uh, for most cases this should be very stable like so all right so there you have it the don't be afraid of the math embrace it it's uh, it's really nice to um, to know some of this so there you have it in a couple of minutes we can create our own accurate gear which you can 3d print and use in your project where accuracy is important so see you in the next videos bye